Hello my viewers, welcome to my series on animation script tutorials. These tutorials are centered around editing move animations within Pokemon games, and they will cover both the code and the graphics. This is my first animation script tutorial, and it's about expanding move particles. This tutorial is about expanding the table of graphics or particles that different moves use in their animations whenever they're used in battle. You might think that it's really easy, but I want to show you the process thoroughly so that it becomes second nature to you. First, for the objectives, I'll cover expanding the table itself, but doing so will cause other problems that we need fixed, namely some graphics in an introduction scene and the sparkle animation that plays when sending out a shiny Pokémon. To look at more tutorials about using Hexmanic Advance, click Help and then click Tutorials. You'll be sent to a GitHub page that contains several dozen guides that you can look at to do a variety of different things. Also, it's a good practice to do Ctrl plus E to make backups of your ROM. Fill in the most recent change in this prompt, and once you do that, click OK and your ROM and its TOML file will be safely backed up for later use. Without further ado, let's start this show! So the table that we're going to focus on for this entire video is the Move Particle Sprites table, which is pretty much what it's called. So in the home menu, I type Particle, and then I click Graphics, Moves, Particles, and then Sprites. Now you're at the table. If I scroll down, you'll see quite a lot of data for all of the pictures that show up when using moves in battle. If I click on different items, you'll see different pictures show up, and some of them are distorted. Although there are unused particles in the game such as this one and this one, I still recommend expanding this table if you plan on adding a lot of new moves to your game. So what you do is you click this text box over here, and then you scroll all the way down to the last item in the table which defaults to white ring, and you click it. So what I recommend before expanding the table is hovering over this 1 in the add one new button, and then you can click the number and type in a new one like 10. Now you click the button and HMA will automatically make the table larger, and make any necessary adjustments. You'll notice all of these duplicate white ring particles that just popped up after expanding the table. You'll have to change these ID values manually, but over here you'll see stuff that says unnamed 290, unnamed 292, etc. Those will have to be changed in your ROM's TOML file which is in the same place as the folder that has the GBA file you're editing. So I'm going to save the game, close the ROM in HMA, and then open the TOML file in Notepad. In here you open the Find menu and you search for Move underscore Particle. And then you'll have to keep clicking Find Next until you find the list that's named Move Particles. As you see right here with the word List and the name Move Particles. Next you scroll all the way down until you see a sequence of unnamed followed by a couple of numbers. This may take a while because there are almost 300 particles in the game. So what you can do in this file is you can change these unnamed numbers to pretty much any name you want. So for example, it might change unnamed 298 to Fusion Bolt Thunderbolt. I can change this other one to Brave Bird Sky Attack, so that Brave Bird could use, say, like a blue animation instead of a white animation. Just fill as many of these out as you want, save changes, close notepad, and reopen your ROM in Hexmanic Advance. We will go back to the table we were at earlier by clicking Graphics, Moves, Particles, and Sprites. And if you scroll down in the Hex Content Viewer, which is the right panel, you'll see the duplicates that we'll have to change. So what I'm going to do now is click the second item in the table that has the Aquamarine White Ring text, as that is the first duplicate, and I have to manually change the index to, in this case, Brave Bird Sky Attack. Whichever one is after the white ring index. And there are two places where you have to make this change, both underneath the palettes table and underneath the sprites table as well. And what I can also do for the sprites table specifically is update the index within the hex content viewer itself instead of just the table tool. And I'll do the same thing for the next item in the table, but instead using unnamed 290 as well as for unnamed 291. Yeah, this manual process will take a while, but it's something you'll only need to do once until you add more particles to the game. Okay, I just cut the footage a little bit. I changed the last duplicate so that the index says Fusion Bolt Thunderbolt, like the change we just made in the TOML file. 
Ordinarily, this is all we would have to do. However, we are going to run into a couple of problems. And I will explain the problems and walk through the solution to them as we speak. Hold on, what are those sprites? I've encountered this issue before and I know it's because we moved the move particles table to a new location. And the solution is to just update the location. By the way, this is only an issue in Emerald. So if you're hacking fire red or leaf green, then skip to this timestamp because there's a different issue you have to solve there. Anyways, I have a clean Emerald ROM open. You can use this as a reference to find the original address of the move particles table. I'm going to type the same keyword and click the same buttons as we've done before. So now I'm at the table in a clean Emerald ROM. So now I'm going to click this box that currently says bone towards the top left, then type the word small or rock, and click the name that says small rocks. Now look towards the bottom left of the screen. Keep track of the address that you see in the address field. If you haven't expanded the table before, it should be 524D14 in Emerald. Now in your ROM hack, go to the top left corner where you see the find button which looks like a magnifying glass, click it, and then type the less than sign followed by the address we just noted, and then the greater than sign. There should only be one search result. Now what you have to do is select a certain set of bytes that correspond to thumb code. Start at the 1 0 byte before the underlined B5 byte, and scroll down while holding left click until you reach this 3 0 byte over here. You should be selecting a multiple of 16 bytes. Once that's done, click the code button on the far left to open the code tool, make sure the code type is set to thumb from the drop down, and locate the part of the code that has our address that we found. So now look at the thing above it, just one line above it. It says 16DDC0. What you can do is go to your clean emerald ROM and go to that same address. Do what we did before by highlighting the exact same bytes and looking at the thumb code in the code tool, you'll notice that at 16DDC0, you'll see a different pointer, although it points to the same address. Same for the palettes of the rocks. Copy these exact four lines of code and paste them into your emerald ROM hack, replacing these four lines that I have selected here. And for some reason, the pointers have turned red. Fortunately, this has no effect on the game, as long as Hexmanic Advance doesn't convert these to null pointers, which it shouldn't. And I can show you what Groudon scene in the opening sequence should look like. If you want to be extra safe for the time being, you can right click and click clear format on both of the red pointers. So to load a ROM in an emulator, click the green play button or press the F5 key on the keyboard, and you will immediately witness the game starting up. Also, for better emulation accuracy, I actually recommend using MGBA over Visual Boy Advance. If you saw the lavender colored question mark in the Game Freak logo, don't worry about it. It was originally going to be used in my image editing tutorial. Now look at the Groudon scene. This is what it's supposed to look like in Base Emerald. With the changes we have made, these rocks no longer look like garbled messes. Now we're going to cap off the tutorial by showing you how to fix an issue with loading shiny Pokemon in-game. So I'm at the move resource thread at pokecommunity.com, which I'll have linked in the description, and I'm going to scroll down until I see the hyperlink to Mr. Dollstakes adding new custom particles tutorial. And you technically could have followed this tutorial instead of mine, but if you glanced at the date this was posted, this is more than 10 years old. So it helps to have an updated tutorial with newer tools. So on this thread, I'm going to skip all the way to step 7. And you'll also see why we have to make this change after expanding the move particles table. Now I won't follow literally every instruction in step 7, what I want to focus on are the addresses to go to in both Fire Red and Emerald. This tutorial doesn't have something for Ruby, unfortunately. So if you're hacking Fire Red, you're going to copy this address. But if you're hacking Emerald instead, you're going to have to copy this address instead, which is what I'm going to do because this is the ROM that I actually made the changes in. So I'm going to return to Hexmanic Advance. I actually did have both ROMs open. But trust me, apart from the addresses, the process will be the same. Click the house button to open the go to menu and paste in the address you copied from the website. Hit best match and you'll be taken to this region of the ROM. So on the byte that's automatically selected, type the less than sign, followed by graphics.moves.particles. And the filtering of anchor names is going to help you here. Sprites slash 233 and then a greater than sign. 
You're going to notice that the pointer will have updated, but it will appear red. Like before, it's not going to be an issue. If I double click that pointer, you will see, albeit with some distortion, the gold stars particle and its corresponding data both on the right panel and on the left panel. Next, I'm going to click the back arrow to go back to where we were earlier and do the same thing, but for the sprite's corresponding palette. Starting with the less than sign again, and then graphics dot moves dot particles dot palettes this time and the same old forward slash 233 and a greater than sign, making sure you avoid spelling mistakes. And you will finally see another red pointer. But if you double click that, it will correctly take you to the actual location of the pointer to the palette. In other words, the next time you or your opponent send out a shiny Pokemon, nothing wrong should happen. So yeah, this is the end of the tutorial. This one was rather short, but I was originally going to make this part of a larger tutorial, but I ended up breaking this off into its own video. There will be more videos to come to branch off of the work that we've done so far, so stay tuned for their releases. You have learned the basics of move particles, and you'll be ready to tinker with them, so that you can make eye-catching move animations for custom moves. It'll definitely help make your ROM hacks battles stand out once you get the hang of move animation editing. Other than that, sorry for the lack of uploads lately. I just didn't have time to sit down and produce anything, apart from commentating a couple of battles. But now I should be able to continue making Hexmanic Advanced tutorials. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and join the Discord, which I'll link in the description. This is Starstruck Shiny, signing off.